This conference will now be recorded. Um, so, uh, this session I will just give an overview of uh, uh, what is APG developer training course, what are topics that we will cover, uh, how many hours will be needed and all those stuff. So, just a basic overview of that and a bit overview of the APG uh, edge product and then accordingly uh, we can take it forward later on. Okay. Uh, yeah, so basically uh, we we'll talk about the course. So uh, I just, well, before going that I would like to understand what is like your uh, background in terms of APG and APIs and what is uh, that you are looking <clears> in for. terms of APG nothing. In terms okay. of APIs I know the concepts. Um, the okay. basic concepts like the rest concepts yes i know that okay. rest concepts that that's what i know in terms sure. of APIs and, and others yeah. and have you had any uh, experience on similar kind of tool like apg like no. microsoft or anything no, 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 okay. no, no, no. uh sure no worry okay so uh, this is a standard developer so basically i'm uh, like a google I'm preparing for the certification so that's the main oh, agenda that's uh, then no problem I, I will prepare you for certification only so yeah th then that is even great so i, mm -hmm. I will prepare uh, i mean give you training specifically uh, for certification because for certification it will not just be uh, apg edge product but it will be a lot of uh, other things that they ask in certification in terms of API design, in terms mm. of Agile and all those stuff that we will cover anyways. So I, sure. Sure. I have, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, topics are already available. In the, just give me a Sure. Manish, you are talking or it's in mute? I think he's on a phone call. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, fine, fine. No problem.
hello yeah man hello uh, sorry uh, guys i'm really very sorry that's some urgent call came so i had to take it up so uh, so yeah i was saying i will uh, uh, prepare you specifically for certification and mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, the slides which i'm having these are the same slide which i also give training in google office so uh, this is like official google slides for developer uh, specialization and uh, uh, it, it will cover most of the topics that uh, is asked in certification and i will uh, tell you specific questions because my certification uh, yeah i gave it uh, just few months back so i'm pretty much, pretty much familiar with all the questions the latest one which they have and we'll make it prepare accordingly sounds good okay sure sounds good uh, maybe before starting this topic if i can know something about you would help sure so from my in terms of my apg uh, uh, this thing i'm like uh, one of the earliest programmers who started working in apg 7 8 years back okay, okay. Uh, so i was even involved in the initial apg implementations and i have worked on i have lost count of how many clients i worked on <laughs> apg and uh, so uh, yeah, right now i'm playing a role of a solution architect in a company called digital api craft my mm -hmm. Manish, you're breaking. Manish, you're breaking badly. Uh, partner of APG, and uh, so yeah. No, so uh, you're, you're you're broke. You broke. You're breaking badly. You said after seven eight years of your experience of initial API, that's where we heard. After that, you broke completely. Uh, okay. Uh, you uh, can you hear me now? Your, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I was saying that uh, now I'm uh, uh, playing role of solution architect, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, my, I'm from like seven or eight years. I'm working on APG. So I have been, okay. uh, and I was working from Google. Uh, I mean, APG office in Bangalore for four mm -hmm. or five years, and now at various client locations and all those stuff. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm involved in APG from uh, architecture, design, development, everything that uh, is gone there. So I get involved in every phase. Right now, mostly my role is to enable other uh, API developers to develop on APG, more like an API coach or uh, not design level kind of thing. Okay. So yeah. Uh, and uh, apart from that, yeah, I'm also a Google authorized APG trainer. So uh, I uh, usually, when I am in India, I uh, at least once in a month, I go to Google office and uh, provide training to uh, uh, APG okay. developers who are coming. Okay, okay. And uh, yeah, and these are the slides which are uh, from official Google uh, training material that I have. Okay, okay. So you are based out of? Uh, actually, I'm based out of Bangalore, but right now I'm in Sydney. Okay. Okay. And April, I'm coming back to Bangalore again for another month. Okay. Or okay. Month. okay. okay. Sure. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, so, in terms of, uh, so this uh, training will contain uh, uh, theory plus uh, hands-on. And uh, mm -hmm. this will uh, give you a, uh, uh, various use cases of APG Edge and also another product called Micro Gateway, uh, which mm -hmm. is a part of APG Edge, uh, which is more of a specific use case from APG Edge. So we'll cover uh, APG Edge and Micro Gateway both. Mm -hmm. Micro Gateway, okay. uh, uh, I mean, not many use Micro Gateway, and uh, Micro Gateway usually needs uh, what you say, uh, licensed version. So mm -hmm. micro gateway practical, there is no actually in the training also, there is no practical in terms of micro gateway, but we will mm -hmm. cover all the topic in terms of what is micro gateway, how, what are the configuration, each and every configuration, all the mm -hmm. use case, everything that we will cover micro gateway and also APG edge and backend. Uh, uh, we, we will have a dummy backend and we will prepare accordingly. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, this uh, is for uh, since you are a development background. Uh, the, uh, it is uh, I mean uh, this is uh, specifically designed for someone with development background and whoever wants to yeah, understand APG Edge and uh, do the development. 
and basically if you, as you said you are familiar with rest concept that is i think perfect uh, i mean um, that that is the base and uh, what we will do is we will use the apg as cloud version uh, uh, if you uh, do you have a uh, free account registered on apg yes 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 i have yeah so yeah that that is uh, one so we will uh, cover uh, 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 lab sessions using that and apart from that, uh, if you have, uh, I mean, uh, if you have Postman, that is great. So we will need a Postman like REST client. So we can test all the API calls and all those stuff. So that, that will be the idea. And uh, yeah, uh, in terms, at the end, of, uh, my aim will be to make sure that you have complete knowledge and I, uh, about uh, the APG certification, and then you can give your exam. So. Okay, sure. Okay, and uh, so. So uh, your certification will be from uh, like uh, uh, it, it will be anyways covered by a company, right? So uh, covered by company in the sense, sorry. As in, they, usually they reimburse if you are cleared. Ah, yeah, there. that would be there. Yes. Yeah, I think that should be fine then. Okay, and uh, yeah. So uh, these are the overall uh, topics that we have in terms of APG. If I divide into various parts, one is the fundamental architecture which is the starting point is we will just uh, uh, refresh your knowledge on rest design principles fundamentals and then uh, concepts of apg edge what is the apg edge product and how it works and uh, different different part, uh, components of apg edge product and then we will uh, move to security like uh, oauth security and oauth is the most important component even in terms of not just for apg and api security but also from certification point of view, there would be at least test, um, 10 or 15 questions which would be around this OAuth thing only in, in your certification. So that is the most important part in terms of uh, study as well and from API security point of view as well. And then we'll see the policy, uh, so things which are part of APG traffic management, how APG Edge manages traffic of APIs. Then we will cover the mediation uh, policies. What is the mediation? Um, uh, what is the use case of mediation like uh, reusable components, fa fault handling, mashing up of responses from two or three different different backends and caching. So this is uh, all these things come under AP, uh, as mediation. The next is uh, add Node.js. Node.js is all uh, APG supports uh, uh, runtime in, uh, environment of Node.js. So even if you don't know Node.js, we will cover some basics of Node.js so that you are familiar with Node.js and then we will see how to use Node.js in APG Edge. So those things we will cover. And uh, then uh, we will have the analytics and logging policies. So uh, and after that, uh, another important point, which is like APG Edge lifecycle management. So we will cover a bit of Swagger open API specification, how to de define a specification in Swagger. You have the deployment plugins and tools. And we will also do some hands on to uh, deploy uh, proxies using um, Maven and all those stuff, the testing mocking, and, uh, and how APG is uh, integrated in a corporate environment or enterprise environment using the continuous integration tools. And also, we will see. And all of these top are the topics which are covered uh, in your APG certification. Uh, so, what we do is usually it is a three full day training that. Uh, we provide uh, in uh, three day the so first day so three day if we divide it is like 24 hours so since we are not um, i mean we might not have the full day thing so we will see 24 hours how can we divide either depending on your uh, convenience uh, it's like a two hour session or like sometime four hours eight hours but overall it will be like 24 hours and these are the things which will cover in terms of sequence so start with uh, fundament, uh, APG as funda REST fundamentals, APG as fundamentals, shared flows, security, and uh, uh, traffic management, fault handling. And then we will move with logging, mashups, Node.js, and other concepts. So this, this is how our, uh, our training will flow through. After uh, covering all the APGs, the last bit will be like more on open API specification, API design, deployment plugins, how to deploy APG on via various tools and uh, then uh, the testing and mocking how to get mocks how to get test cases and everything so that all those things which you will we'll, we'll cover at the end of this session and uh, yeah. 
and uh, so for each of them there will be a few labs i, I will uh, let you know what to do and then you can do on your free org and then uh, this is what you can uh, uh, then try it out and then test and then once you are done with your testing then we will move on with the next topics and then official documentation so this is like uh, this is something that you would need a lot so there are two links i will uh, give you anyways so it's one is docs.apg.com for management apis and another one is the apg documentation which is the uh, base for all these things and uh, you can ask if you have anything any questions regarding apg apg has a very good community uh, website um, and people are quite active there you can ask your questions and uh, do all these things so uh, this is uh, in terms of topics or overview so does it look uh, fine to you or you have any other uh, questions or comments on that hello yeah hi sorry i was speaking on mute okay uh, yes. so uh, yeah it looks fine no problem for me uh, it looks good maybe uh, as i said i was looking for this uh, certification and just to be said that i, I don't come from a developer background that is uh, uh, no problem yeah, yeah. but so i left in, uh, coding yeah i left coding around uh, 14 years maybe so mm -hmm. i was a business analyst product owner and a product manager for majority of my experience and now i am a cloud and solutions architect on an aws yeah so that's sure. what my majority role is uh, so but being a product manager and software architect i'm exposed towards uh, api rest api concepts and microservices but i i yeah. don't have a hands-on so i just want to be a hands-on on an api so if needed for two chances if i have some idea of building myself i would want to architect uh, microservices and manage those api architects myself so that's the main vision and uh, from office i want to be certified uh, in that scope as well so uh, that's majority so but i have exposure towards coding so i don't say i have zero coding but don't look me like a developer for sure i'm yep, not sure. a guy uh, coding a visual basic uh, is a programming language uh, i program very 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 old school i have i have a self learned experience on node js on routes okay. and all that's that's right. self yeah. that's I think uh, that should be sufficient and yeah in okay. apg also there is not much of uh, if you say a hard code coding it is more of yes. all the configuration putting up yes. uh, all the plugins from here and there arranging them in order so yeah yes. apg is uh, not really if you say it's a platform but it's not involves any hard code coding or not you know uh, yeah. hundreds of lines of code so that's a uh, yeah, fine i mean that's yeah. all right and uh yeah so we will uh take uh, so during the tra training also we will take some use cases and we will see how we go about it and how we are do doing because i think all the training um, i mean most of these topics which are uh, specific to apc edge they have a uh, hands-on uh, this thing uh, and even uh, the deployment tools and all we will try to do the practical so you can deploy from your own laptop using those plugins and all and you can see okay this everything is working fine and all you know okay and so so that that even my target will be more like to give more of a hands-on less of a okay. theory and also then uh, will uh, tell you specifically which are the things which are important that you need to make note of or study for your okay. uh, certification you know for example sure. because there are some of the questions which will be uh, stand i mean standard questions which are for certification some of them which i can tell you the topics so there can be any any question from that topic you know so those, those things i will uh, keep telling you to make you uh, prepare for your certifications sure sure okay So uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, core design principle that we have. The when uh, APG promotes itself as a, a, a it is uh, not just for architecture purpose, but it is also for a pre-sales point of view or selling purpose. 
they call it uh, API first approach. So uh, uh, you are putting APIs. Uh, uh, if you see, you are putting APIs in between the app and uh, uh, some server, and also between a server to a backend. And uh, these are uh, from app con uh, from a consumption point of view. If you see, all the apps uh, need APIs because uh, they cannot have the business logic into it. Apps will be, uh, you need to make it more like a dumb terminals. You just make all the calls to backend. From backends, you get the data, process data, and put it there. But they should not contain business logic on the apps. So they need API adaptations in order to build apps. And then you uh, enable developers. Uh, so uh, for your business, you want to expose any feature, you enable developers to build apps using that. And then uh, uh, there is, we need to also take care of security from app to API. So from app, uh, uh, there are certain uh, practices like you should not have uh, secret client secrets or credentials on the as a plain text on the app and all those stuff. So mm. you should uh, there are some security concerns that uh, considerations that we need to take care. And then uh, obviously when you are building an app and all you want to put some analytics to see how uh, it is getting consumed, who is consuming from which region uh, which api is consumed more so that you can take certain decisions based on those and plan for your future enhancements or your uh, uh, yeah, few, uh, all uh, business decisions that you want to uh, drive your business strategy around and from uh -huh. api exposure uh, point of view what we say is uh, when i talk about api exposure it is between so you already have a backend service or a micro service or anything or it can be a soap service anything so there are some services which are existing but you want to expose them for a wider audience then you need to have some uh, properly uh, architected so you need to follow the best practices guidelines for rest and all and provide a level of abstraction so that uh, whoever is consuming from the front end uh, is not aware of what is going on your back end and all those stuff right so for them your uh, api gateway is the end uh, end layer they don't know what your api gateway does where it goes and how it manages those details should be hidden and then enable developers for api use so obviously uh, this is the common thing so like uh, you uh, have all the developers who will build uh, apps for uh, your uh, apis and more apps they make more your apis are getting them uh, more uh, benefit for you so that you can showcase it as a success story and then uh, from api to backend also you provide security so uh, uh, so there are certain uh, things we will anyways uh, go in depth so for example when we are talking from app to api uh, uh, we have certain uh, security things uh, like oauth api key based security and all those stuff right mm -hmm. uh, so it is all on a one way tls but when we talk from api to backend it it is more uh, it can be more on a two-way TLS kind of thing. So you have client certificates and other things which come into picture, right? So okay. because for backend your API is a single consumer, your backend is not exposed to like all the thousands of consumers, right? So that way you need to uh, you can design your security patterns and all. And more on security will anyways have a look and go through uh, when we cover the topics. And uh, I'll, uh, last uh, but not the least is again API analytics, the same thing that. Um, what is going to back and what is success rate, error rate, and uh, various uh, parameters that you want to uh, uh, judge your APIs and you see, okay, this is how this API is getting consumed. So this is, uh, um, so these are the some core design principles when we are talking about this API first approach, that whenever okay. you want to expose any service to wider audience, thousands of consumers, you, know, you uh, want to build an API and let them build apps for that. Sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Right now, what uh, uh, what an uh, intelligent API platform does is it enables the digital value chain. Now, what exactly is the digital value chain? That is the first and foremost important question. So this diagram, I think it shows pretty well. So you have backend. For backend, there will be API team which will build uh, services or microservices. Okay, and then mm -hmm. those will be exposed by an API. So each layer here is adding some value, right? So API team will, uh, they will not use the whole backend, right? They can call three or four databases, process some data, give something. API will enable the exposure and their developer. Developer will call your API. They will then build their custom UI on top of that. And then that experience is uh, exposed to user. 
this developer can be mobile developer standard mobile developer web developer it can be a tablet or it can be now even a smart watch or any any other device right there are a lot of smart devices now in market so that developer can be any developer right and the dev user will get a connected experience so right now what do we mean by connected experience connected experience means uh, uh, for example if airtel uh, or vodafone right vodafone uh, publishes a new uh, sends an uh, email to all all its customers like okay this is like festival sale is going on so uh, uh, get uh, your uh, this much gb of data in only say 20 rupees or 30 rupees something like that right hmm. or uh, and uh, then uh, your uh, customer uh, or customers who got your sms and all they might call call center right and call center employees should know that okay this is something that is going on and they should be aware right it should not be like uh, uh, on one uh, channel you have latest information but on another channel you don't have the latest information right so uh, mm -hmm. this is the example of connected experience of all your channels or we also call it omni channel experience so that all your channels you have something right uh, similarly on your amazon if you are having a value which is you are saving on the shopping cart from one mm -hmm. channel from your laptop but from your mobile also if sometime later you want to access you can access that because it is saved and uh, mm -hmm. this is this is what a connected experience means so why are different channels but because of your single source of truth which is nothing mm -hmm. but your api because all the different channels will call this api they will get all the latest information from there and they will uh, get the uh, 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 and they will be in a uh, uh, you know reading and writing in a consistent manner right and that is the role of an intelligent api management platform that okay this is uh, how it should be it should not be like a, a disjointed set of information right so uh, idea is that uh, expose your services as an api and enable all of the other channels it can be web it can be mobile or any other channel or call center or something they will sim simply call this api layer and using this api layer only they will get the information so obviously since there is only one channel uh, for uh, consumption from an app point of view so you will always have the latest and uh, true information okay uh, next comes is uh, like uh, so uh, uh, if we are talking about it so in your uh, so uh, you might have heard of esbs and all those stuff right if, uh, yes uh, yes from uh, this thing so esbs and also they are uh, so um, use case of esbs are more like the internal systems so they can connect mm -hmm. all the internal various data systems and all those stuff and mm -hmm. using which they can provide a way to communicate but with esbs and integration it can take a lot of time to do all the stuff but when you talk about your consumers and also every uh, uh, in your apps and all the every uh, the frequency of change in your apps would be a lot faster as compared to your IT, which is on ESP layer, right? So uh, you want to build uh, on an enterprise layer. When you plan for something, you go through various phases and all those stuff. But from your consumer point of view, from developers and all, there are new apps coming up there are new uh, announcements on those apps are coming up so there uh, the uh, you know the pace of change there is a big gap between the pace of change right so this can take some long time it can take up two months a year to bring out any new feature and here people want in few days right so th this is where um, there is a gap and this is what is filled by your api uh, uh, management platform which is apg edge or uh, new is coming up uh, with their api platform layer 7 is there and uh, tipco is uh, tipco master is there there are a lot of uh, uh, api management platforms which are do, uh, uh, doing all this stuff okay so if you see these things so all of them are connected via this layer and if you uh, see one important aspect all of these things security scalability maintenance analyzing connection all those stuff all of them these are not functional stuff right if you notice this this mm. is not a functional stuff these are all part of non-functional requirements right mm. most yes. of them so what we do is so all the functional in, uh, requirements are taken care by your 
micro service or your web service or um, yeah any java string based or dot anything that people can build but all the non functional requirements and this is what the meaning of exposer because you have built something but you want to expose it to outer world there are a lot of non functional requirement that you need to consider most okay. of these non functional requirement if not all but most of these mm -hmm. non functional requirements uh, should be uh, you know are catered by or covered by your apm management platforms so like okay. security you want to scale up because there will be thousands of users there will be you want to maintain uh, analyze do analysis and and yeah connecting to various systems various back end do mashups and all those stuff you know so all of these yeah. so with help of these uh, your data your uh, api developers or your web service developers they will not i mean they won't have to write a lot of code for like security a lot of code for uh, you know uh, uh, maintenance and all those stuff they will simply focus on functional requirements and all the non functional things are uh, taken care by this and this is what uh, basically is so if i see all this functionality this is what your apg edge is doing so your apg as does like it will improve your innovation so any innovative things because you know right now there's a cutthroat competition between various say uh, companies for uh, say telecom they will want to have these these features uh, and whoever comes first is the becomes the leader same in case of banking or any other sector right so whoever uh, wants to do it faster whoever gets it faster they do all the uh, uh, they take away all the credit and everything and you know they get a a uh, good pr more number of customers and everything so it it is very important that all these features with uh, these uh, uh, enterprises are planning they have to uh, release it on time and uh, uh, and any feature uh, there is a concept of time to market so when things are conceived in a meeting of uh, like for a requirement gathering or defining the requirements from that meeting up to production release how fast it is how quickly you can do it because for various reasons it is very uh, it becomes very important for them like to get these things uh, get the things moving fast and also gain an edge over their competitors right so this is where apg edge helps them okay So, uh, on, on a different services provided for different different kind of users. So, uh, APG Edge, uh, it's a, like a self-service model. So, you can build your proxies there. You don't need. Uh, uh, I mean, it is not like you need to have your own Eclipse and develop and all those stuff. So, uh, you can build it there. And then, so first, uh, the first is like your API services. So, this is the core feature. Like you uh, have an API gateway feature. Uh, policies program you add programming uh, ability you have apg OAuth security and uh, api versioning governance and all those stuff so this is for core api services which talks to your uh, backend api and then um, based on that the apps will be built then uh, apg also comes up with a developer portal so you can uh, so because one thing is to build an api and expose it another one is how to document it and how to promote all these APIs. So developer portal and developer oriented services really help them. So you have developer portal uh, and you can have smart docs. Another way is uh, another thing is like monetization. Monetization is usually not part of APG Edge standard. It takes even for our license. Monetization is a separate license altogether. And uh, uh, it, I mean, uh, so and it is not not uh, usually as a part of your uh, uh, certification as well. Uh, because this is a very very uh, niche thing when so because most of the uh, teams when they want to charge developers for your apis and all those okay. for api consumption all those stuff then they okay. opt for monetization but that okay. is very rare use case because many of them have their internal developers and all those stuff so so okay. use case of monetization is very rare but this is also one of the things where you embed a payment module and everything so on your based on consumption um, you can charge uh, your developers or any or yeah you basically all your api consumers so that is one, one is monetization just just one 
monetization here uh, so for example if your company is something like an sms gateway provider or maybe an email service provider then you would want to know how the developers are interacting with your apis for their programming and based on that you are planning to charge is that the use case Correct. you're talking okay. Okay. yeah that is one of the standard use cases so yeah you have like uh, thousand sms calls free after thousand you charge for them right so this is okay 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 got it so uh, yeah and uh, next one is like a, yeah, analytics services so in analytics uh, one is like your developer analytics so whenever say i am a app developer uh, okay. i can see how my app is doing okay uh, how many api calls are getting made and all those stuff for mm -hmm. operations and business so operations guys usually they know how many success rates how many failures uh, which api is taking how much time to respond you know how much time mm -hmm. is consumed on apg edge layer how much time is from you know back end going to back and coming from back end the latency from the back end you know all the stuff that you can get and then from app performance so which are the apps which are calling most uh, how and which are the uh, which are uh, the device you know is it android app or uh, from iphone so for example you can have a chat app which is like more of a android uh, so android users are using it more and uh, not much of ios so that those kind of things you can uh, see and uh, analyze and then you can make your strategy okay why not this device why only this device you know all kind of things that uh, you can then think of and then uh, your custom reports so anything you want to know for custom for business for example uh, a business point of view they want to see various metrics and take their business decisions say for this quarter how much is your api consumption how much is api adoption and how can i ask developers to consume it more you know so those kind of things they can uh, make they can present to business because from a technical point of view uh, you can do all the things you can do very uh, where and everything but for business you need to showcase uh, the data right so and the analytics is the single source of truth for showcasing that data that okay you can convince the business okay see uh, my apis are getting like 100000 requests or millions of requests and all those stuff now we need to go in the next phase so people are adopting people are happy you know those kind of things and if backend is not uh, working properly you can showcase from the analytics okay error rate for this backend was more all the different different things that you can do right okay oh, one quick question man is like for example in the case of monetization so uh, if i am an sms gateway provider in yeah. our generic use case yeah. Uh, now, because it's a B two C use case, yeah. I'm taking, I'm paying a package yeah. of ten thousand SMSs or what, and the company would give me a small dashboard uh, which gives shows me what numbers I have sent, uh, success rate and error rate and all that. Yeah. Stuff, right. So now question correct, is, correct. Uh, uh, now if I want to expose that data to end consumer, other uh, in the B two C, not the internal internal clients. So uh, will yeah. APG have something or uh, that is has to be custom developed by the developers separately? Yeah, so thing is that APG provides management APIs. Okay, mm -hmm. so using that mm -hmm. you can get all the data. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this data is available on developer portal as well. So it is for developers. Uh, if you're talking about the end, when you talk the end consumers, are you talking about the yes, app developers yes, who are app. developing app or, right? So that uh, is already part of the developer portal. So so, so they yeah, can so check all the monetization reports everything okay let's say uh manish is the uh, what is an sms provider x okay surya is the developer uh let's yeah. say go logica is the company who is using the uh, sms here uh yeah. for example what happens right surya can be an internal developer to go logica or maybe a third party yeah. developer who is just doing an integration uh for go logica's business requirements okay uh and question is uh, you are the api guy for example oh, sorry the sms yeah. provider so now the problem is yeah. uh if uh, go logica wants to see because go logica is paying you ten thousand rupees and buying one lakh sms's yeah. now the question is the, because of my api calls or adoption in the mobile application of go logica we are consuming the credits that you provided one lakh or a period yeah. of time 
now the question is golajika in his login account he would want mm-hmm. to know how many smss he consumed what was the success rate what were the mobiles he has already sent uh, what yeah. was the how many are roaming numbers and all that stuff. i know that this is not related yeah. to business one but question is mm-hmm. that golajika needs a dashboard to look into it right so my yeah. doubt is yeah. can i uh, have in like a developer portal on an apg which exposes those thing like i can change the front end configurations of look and feel or should i develop using the monetization apis to go logic as a separate internal work that's what my doubt if i'm so uh, apg I'm yeah yeah so apg also provided in the developer portal you will get all the information everything mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. because uh, and it even more detailed one because it, it involves money right so if you are yes. charging something based on like thousands of success calls or total thousands of call then mm-hmm. um, even the go logic uh, mm-hmm. or the actual app developer they need to know okay which are the success why when failure right so everything mm-hmm. so the in the developer portal itself apj will provide a more detailed outlook of all your api calls plus apj also provide management apis so uh, for go logica uh, if they are consuming they can you know sorry if they want to build something on top of apg you know so uh, 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 it's uh, this thing so apg provides something that is a developer yeah. portal if you're not happy with it then you go and build yourself is that the logic correct yes okay. so if you okay. want to get more customizations you apg has all the management apis you call mm-hmm. those apis get the data and then put your own ui on top of that and build it yeah both are available so that's the flexibility with apg okay right right thank you yeah thanks yeah, yeah so uh, we'll go in depth about all the various uh, services that apg has provides so one is like uh, api services so this is like protocol transformation so uh, it's basically like uh, TLS and all those stuff, taking care of TLS, one-way TLS, two-way TLS, uh, SOAP to REST conversions and all those stuff, you know. So uh, it can transform the protocol. So for example, that very standard use case that uh, even I have come across a lot is backend is the SOAP, okay. They have the SOAP from uh, edges. And uh, obviously, if you want to build a REST of the same SOAP from the scratch, it will cost a lot of time, a lot of money. and uh, uh, this thing um, and uh, extra maintenance as well because there will be some consumers for your soap as well and uh, and which you uh, obviously for various reasons you might have to support keep supporting them so what apg has does is that okay so you already have a soap so apg will call that soap convert it into rest and uh, for all the new consumers you will ask to use the rest one and uh, old ones can keep using soap and uh, yeah and in that way, if there is any, any change on the SOAP service, uh, your REST also would be uh, uh, in, in the loop with whatever you are doing, right? So that is one of the standard use cases that I can draw. And then you have a high performance. So uh, APG Edge, you can, uh, APG supports uh, uh, auto scaling and all those stuff. So you can uh, scale, uh, scale up, scale down. Uh, and also uh, for certain uh, APIs, which are not going to change in terms of response, so uh, uh, so any master table that you usually have or any static data kind of tables that you usually call them and you know that response is not going to change frequently you can uh, implement caching on apg layer so it will cache the response so it will not call back and again and again so the response time will be a lot faster and that way you uh, can optimize the performance so uh, from back and also there will be less of latency in all those stuff and then uh, when you are talking about APG, the important stuff is to make sure that versions of your APIs are correct and uh, it should not uh, make developers change uh, again and again. So, and uh, uh, whenever you are taking any new change, um, it is for deployment and for lifecycle management also, versioning is one of the most important uh, stuff. So you have, uh, ver- uh, so versions uh, are, so versions are maintained on APG. And uh, when you want to deprecate any old version, you can easily manage the deprecation and you can um, uh, uh, put all the consumers on the new version. So that way you have a process set and uh, that works fine for all the integrations, especially from the front end. Because uh, in case of APG, the front end developers can be, you know, there will there can be large number of developers, right? And large number of apps which are consuming it. 
so uh, it it is very important that whenever you are uh, having a new change on api uh, then uh, it is a version properly it is communicated properly and uh, it is maintained properly and later on if it's need to be deprecated the deprecation flow should be maintained in a proper way uh, so and then another uh, step is the security so obviously um, uh, security i mean you cannot overstate uh, the importance of security in terms of api world and all so uh, it should be uh, supporting latest protocols latest standard to make sure all the data that you have is uh, secure and then uh, obviously you have that uh, scripting thing so uh, because no uh, product or no platform can guarantee 100 percent uh, satisfaction in terms of requirement sometimes you might have to uh, do uh, some small bit of uh, coding there uh, for example you want to validate uh, the parameters so uh, uh, like email field or something like that so certain things that you want to validate and uh, you can build and use custom logic so apg supports very good connectivity with javascript and uh, java also and Python also. So depending on what, who, who, which, in which language you are more familiar, you can build your custom logic. You can put it there. You can use it. So it's just few lines of code. It's it is not like uh, two different, uh, way, uh, different ways of doing, um, different ways of doing it. It should be easily integrate, integrated. So this is uh, what one of the things APG supports in its API services. Uh, and this is. Uh, uh, so we will cover this thing later as well so this is one of the flow when you uh, when an http client sends a request and the target uh, a, a, a request is sent to target apg has a various flows and we will see these flows later on uh, when you will go in depth and uh, then uh, in the response when the response comes again apg can do that certain processing and then response is sent back to your uh, client so uh, for apg uh, it is very important that the backend system uh, it is on uh, HTTP. Okay, so for example, uh, uh, your AWS APG can call AWS. It is on REST, but APG cannot call uh, queue uh, which is not on uh, exposed, uh, which is not exposed on HTTP. You know, so uh, queue or it cannot talk to database and all those stuff. So that is not the use case of APG or not the use case of uh, standard api gateway so anything which is on http it can be consumed or it can be called from apg layer so that is uh, uh, something where we need to be very careful about so anything which is exposed on a http endpoint no problem yeah so that's the thing so anything on http apg will call if it is not on http then apg cannot call so uh, yeah all this uh, this is uh, it's not Really limitation because it is a standard uh, gateway use case. If it is a non HTTP call, then you use ESB. So then, if in that case you use ESB, uh, hmm. then you can or microservice obviously. So microservice or ESB or something, and then expose okay. it via IPG. Okay. Another one is uh, the analytics. Analytics is uh, not a functional thing obviously, but it is. Uh, in fact, the most important part of your API gateway when showcasing success, failure, or any kind of report to to uh, you know management or various stakeholders, right? How would they know uh, what is your API program doing and how would they get the data, right? So, uh, uh, as uh, I have ex uh, explained earlier, so all your uh, microservices or services are exposed on uh, via APG. So APG will have the single source of truth because it all the data flows via APG. Okay, so there can be n number of systems on the back end. There can be n number of systems or apps on the front end. All of them mm -hmm. are talking via APG, right? So APG okay. will have the actual number or correct number of, you know, request responses, which data came, which data went, you know, all those stuff, right? So that is the best way or that is the best place to find your data which is useful for your technical people, for consumer, for backend, for operations, for and also most important for your senior management and all, right? So because okay. they want to see data, right? How many API calls, uh, how, what is the success rate, uh, how we go ahead, you know? Because if you have exposed your API in a very nice way, but still no one is consuming it, 
and uh, you are not having any proper data to showcase it then you you cannot right hmm. then uh, but if you have all the data from analytics you take the data you uh, build your reports and then you can showcase okay this is that you see millions of apis are getting called so now our apis are getting popular and you know all those stuff and then you can build uh, on top of that uh, uh, many systems on top of that and uh, analytics also is available via management apis so uh, you can also uh, build your own if you are already having some other system you know and you want to put analytics data into that system you can call management api get it in json and put it there you know many many i mean many organizations do that okay so uh, this is uh, one of the important analytics is not like so you don't have to build anything or do any lot of coding for analytics analytics is the by default feature of apg so anything which you are exposing automatic analytics would in parallel analytics will start working that we will see uh, in terms of product architecture now so uh, there are different different layers of analytics as we uh, have seen so one is like uh, uh, so when uh, your uh, api is calling backend so you can get api traffic pattern api performance how is it performance location any anomalies so like uh, you see that okay in this duration why there are too many api calls right so for example if you have exposed any uh, 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 feature uh, and you have launched that feature in a you know uh, with, with lot of fanfare and everything and then mm. obviously people are going to see that in uh, say uh, various advertisements they, they will be lot of api calls right so then mm. uh, you can analyze okay the, there is a, like thousands or you know millions of requests because of this reason and then you can mm. analyze and then you can okay be sure that, okay it is not any kind of attack and it is actual valid traffic right so this mm -hmm. is what you can handle and then you are you can have your uh, various metrics and all those stuff so this is from api to backend the api analytics that you do for developers you can see okay who are the top developers how many are engaged what are the top api users top api products top apps you know you can rank and then you can see who is using more and uh, who is using less and then whoever is using less you can talk to them and uh, you can ask why what is the reason what, i mean you are using less or uh, what uh, can be done more to enable you so if uh, they want to get some more things from apis you can build those things on api and you can ask them to consume it you know so those kind of things you can get the requirement from developers and build it on top of that and the apps you can see uh, the metrics that these are the default reports and uh, uh, which you can simply check from apg uh, dashboard so top performance top uh, usage uh, api performance and uh, yeah which device is calling what is the app version so if new version is getting popular or not or uh, old version is still uh, more popular than new version and all those stuff that you can find out from the apps okay okay analytics and this is the uh, your uh, developer uh, services bit so as we said right, uh, so uh, most important part is like your modeling of api which is like your api documentation so apg supports swagger and all those stuff so using this you can define your api specs easily and you can publish via portal so your api specs are published developer can also uh, uh, call their sandbox or you know make a test call so before going for actual api development they can test from there and they can say okay this is working fine my integration will be all right right because mm. uh, if developer community is not on board then obviously your api is a failure mm. right because if okay. there is no one is consuming there is no point in uh, so you there is no point in cooking a food which no one is going to eat right so even if the food is very good so it's mm. very important that developers get engaged to those things so then developer onboarding and this is one of the very important stuff because even what i have uh, you know observed is so if you are not having a developer services not having a developer portal and self service registration so anyone who want to consume your apis there should be a mm -hmm. developer portal so that they can register themselves they can get an API, they can register their app and they can mm -hmm. get your api key api secret and all those stuff and they can start uh, integrating uh, with your uh, a documentation and they can uh, uh, based on your documentation and start making sample api calls sometime in your big organization that 
uh, obviously you would be a lot familiar than me that you know someone sends an email create me a developer account for this api they will get yes. a certificate uh, so not certificate the credentials it will take two days to create uh, from operations will create a credential it will take two three days three days then developer will uh, try to build something it doesn't work then again come back you know a lot of emails and all and the things uh, might take up to many weeks to get you know, a developers uh, can take a long time to get started. With all these services, within few seconds, uh, you know, within a few minutes, you will have everything ready and you can uh, at least start consumption and then you can engage. There is a community also. So you can build a community, uh, APG provide the developer, uh, in the developer portal, you can pro add a community. So they can, uh, anyone who has faced a similar problem, right, of calling that API, they can uh, put that message and they can check, okay, these other developers can see Okay, these are the problem. These are solution. They will solve it and they will call it right. So all those things. Uh, so all the uh, things move faster. Developer uh, can get engaged more, and they will start their integration. For them also, it will take less time. So for them also, it will be you know uh, a lot faster releases. So if developer have their own release plan, it will be a lot faster rather than you know going by the traditional operations model where you call get these things keep sending all the things on email and it is not secure as well right so uh, usually you i'm from the portal only valid developer will have access and they will register and only that developer can see okay these are my ps secrets and it is generated by system so it is not like coming from email by someone and you know all those kind of things and obviously so after doing that they can get the analytics and then obviously you can have the business model for your api so you can put your api as a product build some business model monetize it and and uh, depending on the use case people i mean how uh, you want to do people can uh, then subscribe to it okay yeah. yeah so this is what and this is one of the sample of developer portal that okay you see that it is a credit card payments you have the uh, sorry you have that uh, you have all the resources from a uh, api developer point of view they can consume it they can see okay this is what and from here it, they can easily create an account and they can log in and they can check everything they can even try to uh, you see, see try it out so they can try making sample calls they will get uh, success failure whatever and then they can fix the issues and make all the calls right so this is okay. how uh, uh, the things which uh, usually takes many weeks into a traditional operations model those things can be moved a lot faster using this uh, way uh, with a traditional way and then uh, so there are some links which you can go by apis apg has some links uh, which i will share uh, with you so this okay yes uh sure so uh Uh, hello, Rama. Uh, hi, hi, Manish. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, so like, uh, for how?